What's good everyone? So welcome back to part two of how not to work out in the gym. So for those of you who are too lazy to check out part one, which I'm going to link below, this is a response to Howcast's How to Work Out in the Gym series with Max Tapper. And uh, yes, it's a very old video series which I'm replying to, but I have had people recently tell me they thought the series was excellent. So this is a good opportunity to dispel some bad information. So, something I forgot to mention in part one, well, I recorded it, I just somehow managed to forget to edit it into the video, but um, Max Tapper, multiple times or consistently, he referred to a bench press as simply a press. Now, yes, the press is a type, and um, the bench press is a type of press, but when you say a press to somebody who actually lifts, they're thinking of a vertical press like that, rather than a horizontal press. So, um, yeah, it may seem um, like I'm being a bit of a pedantic arsehole bring that up, but that's partially because I am, and also because I do think it matters. I think it does reflect badly on Max as a trainer to consistently make that mistake. And uh, also, I do think it actually matters. You know, um, if I write down a list of exercises for somebody to do as a trainer, and they do something completely fucking different because they've been told the exercises or something else, they're not going to get the results which I've said they were going to, and that's going to reflect badly on me. So I do think it actually matters. And uh, as we'll see throughout this video, Max does make a bit of a habit of uh, calling exercises by the wrong name. So with that out the way, let's continue. Hi guys, this is Max Tapper again for Howcast, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to do a deadlift. Yes, one of the most important exercises when it comes to working your lower back and hamstrings and glutes is the deadlift. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it properly, okay? So that is not a deadlift. That is a sort of stiff-legged deadlift with a tiny bend in the knee type thing. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong with it, but it ain't a deadlift. A conventional deadlift, also known as a fucking deadlift, has a lot more bend in the knee. You know what, I'll show you guys. So, has a lot more bend in the knee, so rather than coming down like this, you'll be bending the knee as well. You want to make sure that the bar is nice and tucked into the body rather than dangling it in front like Max had. So you have it here and you want it tucked in the whole way. Also, I'm not saying my deadlift form is the best in the world. It certainly isn't, but it is a fucking deadlift. And I do highly recommend people go and uh, research perform more for themselves. And um, yeah, finally, with a conventional deadlift, you have more of a neutral spine. So rather than having the back arched up as much as you can, you'll have more of a neutral spine, which will bring you a little bit close to the bar and mean that you'll be able to handle a lot more weight. So, yeah, as I said, I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong with uh, Max's variation, but he shouldn't be calling it a deadlift. And for 99% of people, it should not be a replacement to the conventional deadlift. So the conventional deadlift will work the quads a lot more due to having more um, more knee flexion. It means you'll have a less steep back, back angle as well, so you'll be able to handle a lot more weight. And it's also a better workout for the traps and forearms. So overall, it's just a far better overall mass builder. Now, one of the first things we wanna do again is protect our spine, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you from the side. In our deadlift, what we're gonna do is a, a bent knee deadlift in this case, okay? So let me show you how that works. Okay, so I'm not completely sure why he's using a double underhand grip like that. Maybe he's trying to make it a little bit harder on the grip to train the grip more. That would be quite understandable, but as you see, when he walks over to the bar and picks it up for the first time, he uses a conventional deadlift mo uh, motion. And, you know, that's kind of poning himself there. That's kind of showing that that is the natural way we pick shit up from the floor. 
And uh, that's why the deadlift is so important. It's a very fundamental uh, natural movement for us. We've evolved to put loads and loads of resources into achieving that motion and to do that motion nice and safely. And, you know, that's why that, the, the standard deadlift is uh, so important. That's why it's one of the main three lifts. So, yeah, he kind of pones himself there. And in case you missed it, let's show that clip again. Hi guys, this is Max Tapper again for Howcast, and today I'm going to show you guys how to do a squat. Yes, the squat. Okay, so you see that little black pillowy, tampony looking thing surrounding the barbell there? Don't use one of those. Uh, so I could go into a long discussion about how it negatively impacts your lifting mechanics by bringing the centre of gravity away from your body, how it makes the whole thing a little less stable, which is dangerous when you actually have lots of weight on there. I could uh, talk about how it makes the bar more likely to slip and all sorts of things like that. But that thing's called a pussy pad. It probably has some kind of technical name, which I somehow have never heard of in all the time I've been lifting, all the time I've been interacting with the community, reading books and articles and all of that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's called a pussy pad. That's the only thing I've ever, call, ever heard anybody call that thing. And that should give you everything you need to know about it. So yeah, don't use one of those. So. Initially, what we're looking for is to get under the bar and get this bar on our traps, right around here. Exact position. So, um, Max is doing a high bar squat there. Nothing wrong with high bar squats, but personally, I would recommend a low bar squat to beginners. So, I'll, I'll flash up an image showing the different bar positions. And you know, the reasons for that, most people can handle quite a bit more weight when they do a low bar squat rather than a high bar squat. And that means if you haven't got any specific weaknesses, which a high bar squat might help you address, you know, high bar squats tend to work the quads a little bit more, for example. Um, a low bar squat is going to be better for overall hypertrophy. And as a beginner, you're not going to have specific weaknesses because your whole body is a weakness. And, you know, that's not me being mean. You know, that's actually a good thing. It means that, you know, you've got more room to grow. You will actually be able to put on more mass. So, yeah, that's kind of a good thing at that stage. You'll be able to handle more weight. You'll be able to put on more muscle overall. And... I think that it's a lot safer to do a low bar squat, especially for beginners whose form probably isn't going to be that great. Because if you end up with a lot of forward lean, if you've got the bar right there on your neck, that's going to do a lot more damage than if it's on your back and resting all the way across uh, your whole back. So personally, I'd be recommending low bar squats. Sit back, stand on your heels, butt back like you're sitting in a chair. Squat, back. Pause, slowly, up. So Max is not getting deep enough here. Uh, so it's not the worst I've seen by any stretch of the imagination, but if you don't get down to the point where the uh, crease of your hip is lower than your kneecap at an absolute minimum, that is not a squat. Uh, if you can get lower than that without any joint pain, that's fantastic. Uh, by all means, please do that if you can. But, you know, if you're not getting to that minimum point, it simply isn't a squat. <laughs> End of story. Now, um, yeah, lots of people, when they first start, they genuinely can't get that low. And there's all sorts of reasons why that could be the case. It could be a flexibility issue. It could be balance. It could be technique. It could be a lack of strength. There are all sorts of reasons why you might not be able to get that deep. And there really is no shame in that. So, but if that does apply to you, then I'd recommend doing body weight squats to start with. Uh, if you still can't get deep enough, go as, go as deep as you can and just practice those until you can get deep enough. Practice those until you can get uh, 20 proper depth squats. And once you can get to that stage, then start working with the bar as well. Hi guys, this is Max Happer again for Howcast. And what I'm going to show you guys how to do today is a basic shoulder press. All right. So personally, I would call this a dumbbell overhead press or simply a dumbbell press rather than calling it a dumbbell shoulder press. Now, all of these names are kind of equally valid. They're all names which I use for the exercise. 
But personally, I think calling it a shoulder press kind of gives the impression to beginners at least that it's an isolation exercise for the shoulders rather than being one of the best overall mass builders for the upper body. So all we're gonna need for our shoulder press are gonna be a bench or some seat and then our dumbbells. For today, we're gonna use some 35s, right? Okay, maybe I'm having an autistic moment or something, but why the fuck is he telling me that these are 35s? Is he saying that uh, the people watching should be using 35s? Because, uh, you know, if they're complete beginners, you know, from my experience, most beginners can't push 35 pounds for one fucking rep, let alone 12. Uh, is he telling us that, you know, that's what he normally uses? Because for a man with his level of development, that is pretty fucking weak. Now, um, I haven't found any evidence of him actually using heavy weights, but I mean, for fuck's sake, my girlfriend is using 35 dumbbells for 12 reps, uh, 35 pound dumbbells for 12 reps at the moment. He should be using 35 fucking kilos, not 35 pounds with his level of development. Now, our position in our shoulder press is gonna be this. Back against the pad, Body straight up and erect, nice and controlled. We're gonna press towards the ceiling. Nice and slow up to the top, slow and controlled all the way down to the bottom. So about 90 degrees where you're gonna stop the bottom of your arm, okay? Any lower is just gonna put a little more tension on your shoulder cap, not necessary. If the weight's low, then you could do it, but if it's heavy, I always want you guys to stop right around here. So beginners really ought to be focusing on using a full range of motion. So if we pretend this is a dumbbell, obviously a dumbbell is actually going to be a bit wider at the end here. But um, for a dumbbell overhead press, you want the dumbbell to be resting on your shoulder at the bottom of the motion. And then you want to press it all the way up like that. Now, if you have your shoulder all um, further back, you may find you have some shoulder issues like that. So rotate it as far forward as you need to. Um, as you need to and after you've started to press it up, that's when you can rotate it like that. And that is a full range of motion with a dumbbell overhead press. With a barbell overhead press, you want it to be resting on um, your chest at the bottom of the motion there. Retract, retract your shoulder blades, head back, and then as it comes past your head, you can bring your head forward like that. And that's a full range of motion when you're using a barbell. If you can't get to the bottom, if you can't get to that bottom position, that either means there's some really bad technique problem you've got, or the weight is simply too heavy for you. If you can't press it from there, that is a weak point on your range of motion, and that's the point you actually want to bring up. Now, again, and this is the last fucking time I'm saying this, right? Um, <laughs> let's just get this out of the way. This doesn't necessarily apply to uh, more advanced lifters. So I've quite often I have seen um, very, very successful bodybuilders who will just do that bottom bit of motion there because they're trying to bring up their shoulders. And what Max is doing, he's focusing more on the top of the motion. So he's doing about here to here. And that's going to be working the triceps a bit more. But beginners... Don't fucking do that shit. Beginners should be focusing on doing the full range of motion. This is gonna be our dumbbell chest press. Elbow slow out to the side and down. We're pausing it about parallel to the floor. So I'd rather call this a dumbbell bench press than a dumbbell chest press. And basically exactly the same reasoning applies as I was talking about with the uh, overhead press versus shoulder head press. Also, the deeper you go, the more you're bringing your chest into it. So that's one of the benefits of using uh, dumbbells rather than barbells for bench press. And one of the very few benefits of doing it is you can get that much deeper. You can angle it out if you have to, but you can get it much deeper. If that was a barbell, that would be stopping you know, an inch or so of chest there at that point. So you can get that much deeper, you can bring the chest into it. And if you're not going that deep, you're not bringing your chest into it as much as you can. So he calls it a chest press and he's not even using it maximally for the chest there. Now our goal is to make sure that we're gonna make these dumbbells get close to each other at the very top, but not touch. Pause. So why not show the viewers how to put the weights down safely at the end of the set? I think that's a really fucking important thing to be showing people, don't you? Uh, so if that and the amount of weight you've got there is remotely challenging, 
you're not going to be able to just casually lower the weight down from that position. You're either going to end up um, you know, trying to hold on to it and fucking up your elbow, or you're going to end up dropping it and chucking it across the floor. That's obviously potentially dangerous, and it makes you look like a bit of a dick. So, yeah, when you finish doing your dumbbell bench press, you want to be able to bring it down to your waist, sit up, and then you can get up and just put it on the floor like that. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a safe way of doing it. And it really shouldn't be an issue if you're not neglecting your legs and your core and you've developed the rest of your body to be able to deal with it. Today, I'm going to show you how to do one of my favorite exercises, the pull-up. Now, there's nothing, nothing, nothing more effective at building an awesome back than a pull-up. And I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? So, first tip is use your hands as a hook. You're going to lock your hand on as a hook and not even think about squeezing with your forearm. When you do that, you put the emphasis on your forearm and your bicep, and we want to keep it on your lat. So, Why would you want to take the biceps out of the equation, though? I mean, for more advanced lifters, I'm sure, you know, there's some justifications for that. But, you know, for beginners, all it's going to mean, and all it's going to mean bring the bike, taking the biceps out of it is they're just going to have to do more fucking curls anyway. So I say kill two birds with one stone. Use this grip and bring the biceps into it rather than uh, using this grip. It's just going to be a bit more efficient. And also beginners are going to find it uh, far easier to uh, build the strength needed to do, uh, to do chin ups than pull ups. So I think it's a better thing for beginners to be starting with. Here it is. We're up in our pull-up. Our goal now is to pull from our lats, like digging our elbows into the side of our body. Nose, slow, all the way down, back up. So a proper pull-up should be all the way down to here. Now, I think anywhere under here is a passing grade, but to here, that is fucking terrible. <laughs> Max claims this is his favourite exercise, but I doubt he could even do three reps with proper range of motion. Nice and controlled. Very important is the speed that you're using. Nice and controlled. Now so obviously you need to be under control. You don't want to be jerking about and uh, you don't want to be flopping and things like that. But for athletic purposes, you want to be training with a little bit of explosiveness, and as a beginner, you can be training power, explosiveness, endurance, all at the same time. So um, I'd highly recommend you actually train like that. You'll be able to get more reps out like that. You'll be able to make faster progress, and you know, moving with a bit of a uh, bit of explosiveness behind your movements. That's the way you're going to be trying to move if you're doing any sports or you're actually trying to do something in reality. That's the way you want to be tra training your muscles to behave. This is one of my favorite exercises. When it comes to back, this is always the one I'd love to start with because it's more difficult than anything else you're going to do for your back anyway. If you find pull-ups the most challenging, that probably means you're not going anywhere near heavy enough on your other lifts. Now, sure, pull-ups for somebody the height of me or Max are going to be a lot fucking harder than they are for somebody of, you know, five foot six, five foot nine, six foot. It is going to be a lot harder. But, uh, you know, they're still not that fucking hard. Even when I'm doing 40 kilo weighted pull-ups, I do not find it anywhere near as taxing on the body as, you know, when I'm doing heavy deadlifts or squats. It's not even a fucking competition. And you know, I think that probably is, is the reason. I haven't been able to find any evidence online of Max actually lifting anything remotely heavy outside of pull-ups. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for part two. And hopefully part three will be quite a short video. I haven't got that much uh, left to cover. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in part three. Bye.